In this lab, we will be installing the Centrify Zone Provisioning Agent. We will be performing these actions using Client1 and Jesse's account, but we will also connect to App1 using Brian's account. Remember, Jesse is the Unix administrator and Brian is the Windows administrator. But before we do that, we need to recap where we are today. We have joined three systems into Active Directory, a CentOS system, a Solaris system, and a SUSE system. We already Unix enabled five of our users. Jesse is the Unix administrator, therefore he needs to have access to all the systems and perform tasks as an administrator, all without knowing the root password. There's also a different set of groups that are DBA users and web users. We have role assignments that are performed at the zone level, in this case for Jesse's uh, benefit. We have role assignments at the database server level for the database users. And we have role assignments at the web server level. What we are accomplishing here is a governance model that allows only the web users to go to the web servers, the database users to go to the database servers, and a set of super users, in this case, Jesse, can go to any server. But uh, everything we've done so far has been doing manual ads to the zone. In the previous posting, I talked about ZPA and how it can help us do this automatically, le leveraging a process that we already know, which is to put people inside security groups in AD. So as a, as a planning task, we need to do two things at a minimum. We need a service account to run the service. We need a provisioning group that we're gonna nest with the other groups. And we also need a highly available server because a service that is responsible for provisioning, we don't want to put in our workstation. This is why we're requesting Bryant to go ahead and install the ZPA in uh, App 1. So the first thing we need to do is first get a, a service account. So we're going to go ahead and create the ZPA account. service account we want to give it a hard password and make it so it doesn't change so um, we're gonna go ahead and do that so that's it we have our service account also we need to create a uh, what we call a provisioning group so um, all our groups are here I think that um, in a complex environment, we would basically create an OU. So we're going to go ahead and create an OU and call it provisioning groups. And in this OU, we're going to create a basically our master group for this zone uh, for the purposes of provisioning. So we're going to call it Unix HQ zone all users. And uh, we can get rid of the hyphens, I guess. So this is to have a, a naming convention that is, is okay. We have to pick the group scope based on your domain infrastructure, but this is okay for us. And um, what we need to make sure is that the provisioning works the same way as we have outlined it here. So I do know and according to the posting, that I can leverage Active Directory group nesting to accomplish two things, role assignments and Unix profile assignment at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and nest. I'm gonna go ahead and add as members my um, role granting groups. And one of them is Unix uh, database for database users. is where it grants access to the database servers. The other one is Unix web. We're going to 
inject names, and this is going to be for users right here. Remember, our users already belong to those groups. So if I were to look at it, um, uh, I have already uh, Jeremy and all those guys that belong to those to those groups. Let's go ahead and uh, fix something here. I guess uh, our friends uh, Doyle and I guess probably Matt shouldn't be there. Okay, we've cleaned that up. And um, now we have our service account and we have our seeding group. Um, all we need to do now is to install ZPA. And remember in the files share, we have the Centrify folder with the Centrify installation files. We're gonna go to the direct manage folder and we're gonna run uh, Centrify ZPA setup. At this point, ZPA's, CPA is being installed, so it's going to ask us to do the um, the common uh, components installation. So let's go ahead and, and do that too. We're going to follow the steps to do the installation of the common components. We're going to accept the agreement, do next, and we're going to do next and do the installation. We're going to say yes to this prompt. And it should be very simple. Now we can pick it up again and, and actually install the ZPA. We're going to go back to Direct Manage 64 and uh, do the ZPA installation. And it should be pretty straightforward. And accept here. Put my company name. And that's it. Um, I'm going to accept defaults. Um, the installation is complete we're going to go ahead and play, press the finish button and um, we're going to go ahead and pick the ZPA account that we created in corp put in the password Let's start the service because I need to make sure that the account has the proper rights to um, log on as a service. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the services console. And find the ZPA. We're going to go and uh, do properties. We're going to go to the logon tab and we're going to specify the account here. Uh, what this is going to do is going to give the account the right to log on as a service. And now our service uh, is configured, um, but it's not, it's not actually running yet. Um, we need to go to the configuration control panel to actually do that. We're going to open it. And uh, the first thing we need to set up is actually the force. This is OK. Uh, the polling interval is going to be the timeout for it to go out and pull in Active Directory and see if this, the provisioning groups have any changes. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it for one minute. Uh, this is not realistic in a, in a production environment. This will be aligned with uh, the SLAs that you have. Notice that we have the ability to set up how uh, logging is, is uh, actually done. If we need to troubleshoot, we can do that too.